Good morning. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. If you would open up your Bibles to Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Find that right after Proverbs in your Bible. And we have Solomon, the wisest king of all time, uh, writing this. And he's going to share with us some more things about himself. He said, I said in mine heart, go to now and I will prove thee with mirth. Therefore enjoy pleasure and behold this also. Is vanity, it's nothingness, um, emptiness. I said of laughter, it's mad and of mirth. What, what does it really do? What do with it? I sought in my heart to give myself unto wine, yet acquainting my heart with wisdom, and to lay hold on folly, till I might see what was that good for the sons of men which they should do under heaven, under the heaven all the days of their lives. So he tried to seek out the path of wisdom and all those kind of things, and then he decided to go the other way and check out and plumb the depths the other way. Um, folly, um, mirth, wine. Um, so in the midst of that, he was also seeking wisdom. And so verse 4, he said, I made me great works. I builded me houses. I planted me vineyards. I almost want to have a pirate uh, accent there, but that would be, you know, but I planted me vineyards. I made me gardens and orchards, and I planted trees in them of all kinds of fruits. I made me pools of water to water therewith the wood that bringeth forth trees. I got me servants and maidens and had servants born in my house also I had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. I gathered me also silver and gold and the peculiar treasure of kings and of provinces. I got me men singers and women singers and the delights of the sons of men and musical instruments and that of all sorts. <clears throat> So you wonder what types of instruments they had back in the biblical days. They had all sorts. So we know they had uh, guitar type, harp type, horn type. Um, so. so I was great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also, my wisdom remained in me. So despite all that he was pursuing, all that he was doing, his wisdom still remained in him. A uh, thousand wonders since he was, you know, running after all kind of weird stuff. Um, and whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor, and this was my portion of all my labor. So all the works that he did, he his heart rejoiced. He, he, he uh, immersed himself in, in, in anything that brought him some form of happiness. It's, Kind of similar to what we do in these days. He says, Then I looked on all the works that mine hands had wrought, and on the labor that I had labored to do, and behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit. There was no profit under the sun. What could, could you truly keep here on this earth? Answer is, nothing. You can take nothing with you. <clears throat> so... He's trying to come down to boil all this down to a synthesis, and he'll get there uh, because he's a wise man, and he wants to share with us uh, the reason why we work. Well, obviously for joy, we receive some form of satisfaction of our labor. Um, but everything that we do is it going to last? No. Well, just got to know that, okay? So he says, "I turned myself," verse twelve. To behold wisdom and madness and folly. Now he's starting to head down that uh, rabbit hole. For what can the man do that cometh after the king? The king's done it all, okay? He's done everything. You could possibly imagine he's done it, he's got the money to do it, and he's done it. So now that you're coming after me, in other words, in time, you're going to come up. What can you do that hasn't already been done? That's what he says here. What can the man do that cometh after the king, even that which hath already been done? Then I saw that wisdom excelleth folly. Wisdom is much better than following after folly. Duh. 
He says, as far as light excelleth darkness, that's how much better wisdom is than folly. The wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walketh in darkness. And I myself perceived also that one event happened to them all. What's going to happen to every single life on this earth? One event. It's going to come time for us to be with God in heaven. Um, or you're held in the dirt until the time of punishment. Your choice. So then said I in my heart, as it happened to the fool, so it happeneth even to me. And why was I then more wise? How is this being more wise? The same thing's going to happen to me that happens to the fool. The wise man and the fool, same thing's going to happen, right? Then I said in my heart, this also is vanity. For there is no remembrance of the wise more than of the fool forever, seeing that which it that which now is in the days to come shall all be forgotten. And how dieth the wise man? As the fool. Same way. And so it says, Therefore I hated life, because the work that is wrought unto the sun is grievous unto me, and for all is vanity and vexation of spirit. Yea, I hated all my labor which I had taken under the sun, because I should leave it unto the man that shall be after me. What kind of legacy will you leave, though? Sure, you're going to leave it to somebody else. But what are you going to leave? I think it's better for us to try to focus on the things that are, that are good, the things that are helpful, the things that are going to make things better for others, uh, try to improve the world. And so... He says in verse 19, And who knoweth whether he shall be a wise man or a fool, the one who comes after? Yet shall he have rule over all my labor wherein I have labored. Everything that I did, they're going to take. And this is true. And of course the kingdom gets divided. There's warfare. Uh, Rehoboam and Jeroboam and um, all kind of terrible things happen. He says, and wherein have I showed myself wise under the sun? This is also vanity. Therefore, I went about to cause my heart to despair of all the labor which I took under the sun. Sounds like he's having a little bout of depression. What do you think? <laughs> a wee bit. He says, for there is a man whose labor is in wisdom and in knowledge and in equity. Yet to a man that hath not labored therein shall he leave it. For his portion. This also is vanity and a great evil. It says, no matter what good that I do and how I improve everything, I'm going to leave it to someone who may not measure up. Well, that's not up to us, is it? Not our choice. Verse 22 For what hath man of all his labor and of the vexation of his heart, wherein he hath labored under the sun? So the trials that we go through in life, the tribulations, the successes the defeats all bound together he just says it's like it's a vexation of his heart while he lives but what do you get to keep wherein he hath labored under the sun what do you get to keep well you can measure it up in this way anything that you have done for the eternal for god for god's kingdom that'll last Everything else is wood, hay, and stubble. And guess what it's going to do? It's going to get burned with fire, tried with fire, to see what remains. The only thing that's going to remain are, the, are the, those souls that you've touched for God, that you've uh, led to the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, kingdom work, okay? Missionary work. This is for 23. says, for all his days are sorrows and his travail grief. Yea, his heart taketh not rest in the night. This is also vanity. There's nothing better for a man than that he should eat, drink, and that he should make his soul enjoy good in his labor. This also I saw that it was from the hand of the Lord. You should enjoy what you're doing. Have your peace because of what you're doing. It says, for who can eat and who can hasten hereunto more than I? Solomon said, I did the, <laughs> tried to accelerate everything to the max, you know. For God giveth to a man that is good in his sight wisdom and knowledge and joy. 
But to the sinner, he gave a travail to gather and to heap up that he may give it to him that is good before God. This also is vanity and vexation of spirit. Now, the wisdom that comes about, I'm talking about that distilling together of, of everything that he's saying. Um, remember, there was a, a song written about this. Uh, um, it says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. There's a time and a season for everything. There's a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, and a time to get, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to rend, and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. What profit has he that worketh and that wherein he laboreth. What profit do you have truly? Since I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it in his life, he's made everything beautiful in his time. Also he has set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. We can't see what God's plans are. We can't see what he's doing all around us, but God knows what he's doing, and his plans are set into motion. Cogs and wheels and wheels and cogs and things going on. Uh, the, the time is elaborate. The, the, the fabric is woven. And um, you know, I've seen things that, that there's no way that this could have been set up in my lifetime, and yet it, it converged with my life. Um, he purposely plans and plants and prepositions things in your, and people in your life and, and things happen in their lives and all of a sudden it all comes together and there's no other explanation other than that God knows the work from the beginning to the end and we don't. <laughs> but recognize it when it happens because it's truly remarkable. It is miraculous. Verse 12 says, I know that there is no good in them but for a man to rejoice and to do good in his life. These, this is the things that, that satisfy. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all of his labor. It is the gift of God. Okay. You should be able to eat of what you plant. <laughs> Reap what you sow. That should be good, not bad. I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And God doeth it, that men should fear before him. That which hath been, is now. That which is to be, has already been. And God requireth that which is past. And moreover, I saw unto the sun the place of judgment, that the wickedness was there, and the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. And I said in my heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked. For there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. And I said in my heart concerning the estate of the sons of men, that God might manifest them, and that they might see that they themselves are beasts. Now, we can see that from time to time in our own selves. It says, For that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts. Even one thing befalleth them. As the one dieth, so dieth the other. Yea, they have all one breath, so that a man hath no preeminence above a beast, for all is vanity. What's the difference between a beast and a man? The soul which God has given to humans, yes? Breathed in and given to us. All go to one place, all are of the dust, and all turn to dust again. That's the body. It's different with the soul. And who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward, and the spirit of the beast that go downward to the earth? 
Wherefore I perceive that there is nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his own works, for that is his portion. For who shall bring him to see what shall be after him? We'll get to see it in a different light because once we leave this body as believers, the body may turn to dust, but uh, our spirit will be instantly, as soon as we close our eyes in death, the Bible calls it sleep, we'll be in the very presence of the Lord uh, until we re receive our glorified bodies. Again, those who do not know the Lord, their body will be in the dirt and will go away, but then their soul will be held in a place called Sheol, uh, Gehenna, burning, uh, torments, never consumed, and awaiting the final judgment where they'll be cast into um, hell itself, where uh, they'll be separated eternally from God. And that's uh, not anything you'd wish upon anybody that you know, even your worst enemy. That's why we're to love our enemies and pray for them, which despitefully misuse you. Because um, that's not a place you want anyone to go. So the distillation of it all is that we should enjoy what we're doing. Okay, If you're not enjoying your life and what you're doing in your life, you need to change jobs. You need to do something else. Okay, Because uh, you need to do something that brings you satisfaction, that brings you some, some you know, peace in your life. Uh, so that you can enjoy the, those things. We don't live very long. A short life. I don't think uh, you can add much more to that. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. We thank you for your plans and your provisions. And I pray, Father, that you'd help us to recognize um, you in all things and that we might praise you and work for you and uh, help us to receive a, a blessing this week. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen.